workout partners, Don Strozier, who is the guest co-host here. Get, uh, Don is her uh, fitness trainer, and so she works out with us three days a week. So it was a lot of fun. Uh, she shows us all up. She's in her 70s, and she makes us look like we are, I don't know, we look like we're much older than she is because we can't even keep up with her. But she is an awesome, awesome person. So shout out for Miss Thelma Houston for uh, an incredible a career in the music industry, still has an amazing voice, still creating and, and dancing and just awesome. So shout out to Miss Thelma Houston. Uh, guys, I want to talk to you a little bit about, I'm having a workshop and this workshop is taking control of your money in 2019. And I'm going to be teaching our entrepreneurs, business owners, uh, hair stylists, barbers, anybody that is out there doing business for themselves, how to track their money, how to understand how their money comes in. Um, so basically, this is the basics of accounting for small business owners, and it's there to help you make the most out of how you spend your money, how you um, how you uh do your invoicing, how do you track the sales, also the timing of your invoices and the timing of the payments of your invoices so that in the payment of your expenses, so you have much more cash flow to work with throughout the month. So this class is going to teach you the basis, understanding like I do, because that's what I do in an accountant bookkeeper. I understand how money is supposed to flow through the business so you can get the maximum benefit of that. And so this is um, this class, we're going to teach you how to do this because I don't know if you know, but most businesses fail due to poor financial decisions. If you don't know how your money comes in your business, it's not just about invoicing and waiting for your clients to pay you. It's about setting up terms. It's about uh, making sure that money is flowing through the business throughout the month because your expenses flow through the business throughout the month. Um, understanding how you're pricing your product to make sure that you are getting, uh, you're including uh, all the the costs that it takes you to produce that product, making sure that you're including that in your pricing as well as the value of that product. Um, that's one of the things we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about understanding cash flow, um, how, again, how you serve how you make sure that your money is, is there to work for you for the entire month. We're going to talk about um, forecasting, how you project out for the year, and then making sure that you're working from the bottom up, how much profit you want at the end of the, at the, end of the year. Uh, so that takes some strategic uh, pricing and planning and forecasting throughout the year to make sure that you are doing that. And then the other thing we're going to talk about is the importance in, um, of financial reports and how to read your financial reports to also help you make those decisions and uh, tax preparation. Um, there's some, been some new laws that are affecting different uh, industries or industry clusters, and that's going to affect how you do business. Also, the, here's the thing. A lot of us solopreneurs, we never know when it's time to hire, and it's really based about the, based upon the, the flowing of your cash because once you start payroll, it's important that payroll continues on. You just can't uh, start it and stop it. Um, when you have contractors, you can kind of modulate when you want them to do work for you. But as an, when you hire employees, which is what all businesses should be uh, prepped to do, um, you need to know when is the right time to do that and how much money you need to have on hand and what type of business and services and you need to be offering uh, to do that. The other thing we're going to talk about during this class is whether or not your product or your services is actually selling um, and whether or not you should replace it with something that may be more popular with your customers or your clientele or maybe you need to readdress um, the, the services that you're doing and actually create some new services based upon what the trends are and what your customers are looking for. So those are the things. So if you're interested in that class, right now it's running for $129 into January 21st. The class takes place on 
January 28th through February 25th. Fifth is a four-hour class, four-week class, and it's starting at 5:30 to 7:30, and it's going to be held at the Los Angeles Urban League at 4401 Crenshaw Boulevard, Suite 201. Um, and so the space is limited. We have about a space for about 20, uh, about 15 people now, and um, and pre-registration is required to attend. So if you're interested in it, I will give me a call at 323-906-7004 and or email me at cmitchell544 at gmail.com and we can get you signed up and get you the link. Uh, this is important, guys. It is really, really important. I think most businesses don't understand how how important being able to manage your finances are in your business. You can't grow if you don't know how much money you're making. You can't grow if you can't project uh, uh, project out how much or forecast how much money you need uh, for the, the coming year or the coming years. You cannot grow your business beyond just what you're doing now if you don't understand, if you can't read financial reports. And above all of that, being able to how to manage your money so you're not playing out a lot in taxes and and then for those of you that feel that you don't want to pay a lot of taxes so therefore you're not doing a lot of business um, not the way to run a business uh, for those it make let's be very very clear a real good friend of mine is Nolan Ron Rollins that was the president of the Los Angeles Urban League used to say that um, he was he was famous for saying uh, make no mistake we're in business to make money but more than that we're in business to create a profit so you need to be able to say I'm in business I'm not working at my business I'm work my business is is flourishing whether I'm there or not and it's making money and it's in a position to help those in my community so that's one of the things so if you're interested in that class uh, give me a shout out and we will get you the information at the same time uh, you have to be able to have you have to have a software program or accounting system that is tracking these expenses so I'm having another class and that date is on January 24th uh, it's a four-week program as, as well. It's a hands-on training course. I'm teaching you how to use QuickBooks. I'm teaching you how to um, uh, create your chart of accounts uh, and just so that, and track and how to invoice your your how to invoice and as well as how to pay your bills and how to put that in a system so it can generate reports for yourself. Uh, for forecasting as well as for your check tax preparation and in addition to that um, if you're looking and needing capital to run your business you also need to have very um, adequate reports your balance sheet and your profit and loss statement uh, so that you can let you, those individuals know that your company is making consistent money and has been making consistent money and that your uh, expenses are in control and that you have money to pay them back because that's the only thing they're concerned about is if I'm going to give you money how do you pay me back so, um, so we're going to carry on we're going to change to a different subject but again if you're interested in those two classes give me a shout out and I'll help you out uh, this is what I do for a living I've been doing that for 30 years uh, I kind of do it in my sleep and I understand when I even businesses in my community when they failed I know exactly why they failed because for whatever reason we we tend to think that that's not an important part of uh, doing business and it's probably the most important part right along with marketing so here's a subject that came up this week both for myself and and a couple of other colleagues of mine's um, the difference between cost and value. So this will be some of the things that we're going to talk about in, in this particular workshop. I, um, as a consultant, sometimes it's, it's difficult to price your product that one, that is going to provide you with some profitability and two, at the same time, be affordable for those, your demographic that you're trying to reach. And, um, and sometimes we devalue ourselves. Sometimes other people devalue us. And it's, it's, it's a little bit more difficult uh, than when you have a product because a product is pretty easy to, to price. Generally, there's a market, um, 
um, consistency. So if I'm selling water and everybody else is selling water, there's a common price between the two entities and I have to either price it the exact same and then I have to use other marketing tools in order to get you to buy my water or I can price it, um, I can have some extra benefits to my water my water which therefore will increase the price of it or at least that's the way I'm gonna market to you is to increase the price of it and then you find value in that and then you purchase it now doing that with services is a little more difficult because it's not it's not a tangible product it's not something I can put my hands on um, generally depending on how long you've been doing this service uh, your ex your life experiences your business experiences and those of your clients uh, add to that value and if you perfected your craft then that adds to your value um, but how do we do that how do we determine the difference between cost and value so the way when in our industry, in the accounting and finance industry, we look at it as the cost of your product or service is the amount you spend to produce it. So if I'm, if I have a bottle of water or, um, you know, a cell phone, well, the materials that I use, the, um, the labor that I use, those are the things that one, I'm buying at cost. And so at least to break even, I have to be able to recoup the cost of me being able to produce it. But at the same time, I need to be able to, um, make a profit off of it. So then I have to add a markup to that, that will justify me, you buying my product over anybody else's. So that's the difference between cost and value. So when I am doing a service, it's a little bit more difficult um, to add the value piece onto it, right? So um, that becomes your being able to articulate why one would buy your service for the amount that you're serving, you're selling it for, or why they would do it with someone else. So the price is your, so you have your cost, which is how much it costs you to create your product or your service. And two, the price is the financial reward for uh, providing that product or service. And then three is the value of what your customers believe that product or service is worth to them. So when it comes to us as service providers, that's where it gets a little tricky because if we have to use any any systems or products or anything to produce that product, okay, that's pretty simple. You pay X, Y, Z for your cost of goods or your cost of service, so you know that's part of that price. Then two, if it's packaged anyway or um, uh, the labor, how much it costs you to execute that product or that service or build that product or that service. And then three, um, how do you deliver it to them, right? And the marketing goes into that. Your office space goes into that. So that's a little easier. How is it? Hey, Michael, how are you? How do you add the value? Because the value is what your customer believes the product is worth to them. So for those of us that are that have service-based products, we have to make sure that our customer understands the benefits that they're going to get from this product, how that's going to help shape their life or change their lives or save them money or help them um, create a... Um, something they need. So if we take a fitness instructor or a trainer like Don is, um, how, what is the maximum benefit for you working out with a trainer versus why working out by yourself? So that has to be articulated and you also have to have your historical data so people can see the benefit of it. Now I'm one that, um, um, I'm, I, I have the self-discipline to to work out myself. I do cardio. I do um, a number of dance classes and so forth. And I've always been like that. And I'm very active. I have my tennis and I used to ski. So it took me a minute to see why I would need, what the benefit of a trainer is versus me doing it myself. And so by working out with Don for the last six months, I have found the benefit that one is that accountability is two 
at times when I would talk to myself out of working out or why I am working out, maybe not working at my maximum potential, uh, with a trainer, that person is there to make sure that you are doing that. And then they're making you accountable for that because they make you feel guilty if you don't come out and work out. And then, or at least for me, that's what I got out of it. But what I have noticed in the last six months is my body has started changing. I have much more energy. My clothes are fitting differently. And so now the benefit of working out with a trainer has a lot, it, 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 I've gotten there quicker than I would have done for myself. And there's some exercises that I do in the morning that I know I wouldn't do if, if there was not somebody over me saying, do the burpee. I just know that. So, um, so that's, that's the benefit. So when you think about your business, what is the benefits of a person hiring you to be their coach, hiring you to be their instructor, hiring you to sell their home? Why should they choose you over the multitude of other people that are out there doing the same exact same thing? So that's some of the things we're going to talk about. We're going to mark. You're going to actually identify what those benefits are in your business. And then we're going to learn how to price those into your product. The next thing is the criteria your customers uses for buying buying and making those decisions. For example, the speed of the delivery, uh, the convenience and the reliability. So here's something that happens a lot. Um, and I, we've hired for RBD, Recycling by Dollars. I've done it with a couple other nonprofits. You hire somebody to do your website and um, you don't know too much about it. So therefore, it's pretty easy for them to um, kind of take you down the rosy path and let you know that, um, you know, the product is coming, but then the product may not come for a long time. And then at some point you need that, that, that your uh, website to be up and you're fighting with them to get it up. Um, so now you, you've paid them a lot of money. So now you got to go back and, and rethink about it. Am, am I getting one, the speed of delivery or the delivery that was promised? Uh, is it convenient for me? Am I losing business because they're not producing the way they should be? And or you, this is you on your side as well. And is this person reliable? And are you reliable in delivering your product or services? So if you <clears throat> can score yourself or give yourself a A plus grade in all those areas, then of course that means your price for your services are probably going to be a lot higher um, than um, the, the next person because, again, it's what you've been delivering and you have the testimonies and you have the historical track record to say, I deliver X, Y, and Z 99% of the time to my clients. Um, I, I, I offer great customer service. I'm there when you need me. And then the person can produce, so you can produce the outcomes and the measures of being able to demonstrate that that's exactly what happened when they actually used your business. Okay. And then the next thing is the value that your customer places on receiving those benefits that you provided. So now how do we do that? So we have to make sure, and I'm deficient on this as well, that the people that we have serviced in the past, our clients or our existing clients or our past clients, making sure that they send you testimony saying, wow, I worked with Crystal and I was able to do X, Y, and Z. That's important because when people are coming back or you're pricing your products and they're questioning why you're charging what you're charging or why you're not charging less, then you can say, but you know, if you've gone to my website or you can read the testimonies of all the people that I've helped and you can see the outcome, you can see that their businesses have grown. So therefore, this is why I'm charging what I do. And a lot of times, and we've talked about this on the show before, um, it's not just us you get, you get us and all our community that we work with, all our colleagues, uh, our previous experience with numerous of other companies, and we've actually seen how we've troubleshooted and helped correct and move them on the right direction. So you're not just getting us, you're getting a whole community of which we have uh, access to. In addition to that, if you need other resources, we probably um, will have those resources that we can refer you to. So that's just to let you know 
why what's the difference between cost and value um, but one of the things we all need to do is if we're providing services we do a, a big disc, uh, advantage or disc, uh, um, to ourselves and to our bottom line because we always have to be looking again we're in business to make money we're in business to uh, make a profit and so we're doing a disservice to ourselves if we're not pro processing our products the way they should be processed so I um, just wanted you to know that and if you want to learn how to build a pricing strategy again the class that I'm having in on the 28th that's what we're going to talk about making sure that we're pricing our products so that we are getting the most and that we can continue to provide our services because just like we're helping that person build their businesses for those of us that are coaches and consultants we are also running a business so if I'm shortchanging my business then I won't be able to offer you the high standard of services because I'm worried about paying for my bills and everything that it requires for me in order to execute and provide those services for you so just something to think about guys um, sometimes I know we just tag a, a put throw a price tag up and we think that that's fine but um, it's really really uh, it, it, and you have to understand what goes into that pricing, um, what um, fixed pricings that are there that you have to pay for yourself. So whatever whatever it requires you to execute that product. So that's really really important. And I think we should um, everybody should be thinking about that right now. We're in the beginning of the year, so this is a great time to make adjustments. Um, when you go into a store and you see prices have gone up, it's because um, the, the prices have gone up because whatever they used or whatever products they needed in order to execute that, that sale or that product or to sell that product to you, they've gone up. So on the back end. So if you go into a supermarket and you find your, your vegetables have gotten higher is because there's some other external something going on. Either there's a rain or the drought or something that is making the the, the your product more expensive to produce and then you have to pass that on to your customers because you can't absorb that price because again you're not in business to go out of business you're in business to make a profit so just some things for you to think about hey William how are you welcome to the business zone so think about um, and uh, so we're going to take a quick break and we're going to find out where my guests are and we're going to find out where my co-hosts are and we'll be right back Hello, meet Larry. Larry is a general contractor. Larry is very good at his craft, but Larry has a very tough time managing his paperwork because he is busy taking care of his clients' needs. Larry just cannot find his important business documents when needed. Larry is also being passed over for bid opportunities from prime contractors because he is perceived as not ready. <laughs> 